Good afternoon, Carol. A pleasure to have you again at Contemporaneo. This is your second home, as you know. I love and it. And generally, we interview artists or visit artist studios, but she is an artist in another form of art that is very important. She's a natural connector and a communicator and someone that creates and believes in human synergy. So for us, it's very important, not only to honor her, but to have the opportunity of share with uh, you guys, our contemporaneo family, um, who she is and all the valuable information that she can share with us and with you. So welcome again and um, please talk and this is a visit <laughs> to, to our home. We will do some questions, but um, we really want our universe to know how pivotal you are in the Asheville art community and you have become a force of nature in this community. Oh my gosh, please stop, stop and, you. And we you want me you much. people to know about that. Thank you, so. thank you. I, I want to touch my face, but I can't. Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. To me, it is an honor to be here because ever since I noticed this gallery about four, three and a half, four years ago, coming mm -hmm. into place, I was with some of my friends. We were doing one of the Friday night art strolls and I said look look these people are from Florida and I said how do you know that I said I just know because I'd lived in Florida for over 20 years in the Miami Fort Lauderdale Palm Beach areas before coming to Asheville and I said they just are I know <laughs> I said I don't know but I know and then little by little I think I came in one day and introduced myself to you or got acquainted with you and We've had a couple little nice gatherings here. By the way, friends. cheers. Yes. <laughs> cheers. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. <laughs> cheers. And um, so I love the energy. I, I feel like your <clears throat> compatriots are friends. And we did a last week, oh, actually earlier this week. Or last week, rather, we did a, no, it was earlier this, this week. This right? Monday, Time yeah. flies. The interview with Enrica. An interview with Enrica Ruff, one of your featured artists here who is from Miami. And then uh, I think it was in February the 24th, somewhere around yep. there, we did have you two on my radio show, Dreamers and Doers. And it's one of my favorite interviews. And I was even talking to my co-host, Zakia, the other day. She said, oh, I love them. When are they coming <laughs> back? And um, what I love is here, the hospitality. When you come in, you feel welcomed. Uh, it has nothing to do with the, whether you're a collector, a no, buyer of art, an aficionado of art. You're just a person coming in and kind of looking around. And there's a feeling of welcomeness here that I love that you don't always sense in some galleries, not necessarily here, but just in general. Um, the other thing I like about coming in here I always see something for the first time, even though I might have been in here five or six times during the month. I see something for the first time, and then I see it again for a different time. You're forcing me to think, and you're wearing me out. No, you're forcing me to think. I look at things, and I'm wondering, number one, in many cases, how does the artist work? What materials do they use? How do they, what's the conception? What are they telling me? And then thanks to both of you, you often explain it like one of the pieces up here from the, I believe it's a Venezuelan artist now living in Africa, in South Africa. Correct, Lorena Morales. With, uh, she's part you, of our current show, Materializing Ideas. When you explained to me what Lorena was doing, it's like, oh yeah, of course, but just on my own. Uh, but it was fascinating, the, the detail and what she brings to that. And I had the pleasure of having an interview with Enrique Rupp earlier mm -hmm. this week. Her work blows me away because it's, it's 3D. And then it just speaks to me in more of a metaphysical or meditative way than it does anything else. And you mentioned something that is very important when we have uh, an artist in our gallery, our duty is really to convey their vision to the people that come here um, and sell their vision. I'm not, 
yeah, obviously the, the idea of selling a piece of art is part of the equation, but in reality what we want is to share the idea that the artist had when they created the piece. Mm -hmm. And um, that's part of the magic and the beauty of this job, which is not a job, it's a pleasure. Yeah. And, and we love to talk, <laughs> and I love to talk. Um, <laughs> Carol, I mean, since you have lived here, if I remember well, for almost 14 years. Correct. Um, what is your, how do you see the Ash Villar scene in terms of the theater, the museum, venues? Um, it's, it's changed somewhat, uh, and to me, better, better, better. Um, but I want to back up for just one second, if Absolutely. I may, specifically about Kemp. This contempor is an informal conversation. Well, <laughs> specifically about Contemporano Gallery. I have another artist friend here, Joyce Thurnberg, who I'm hoping mm. you will meet someday over in River Arts District. She kind of got me into this track of non-representational art mm -hmm. versus representational art. And I would always just say, oh, this is abstract. Well, as you both know, that's a certain specific genre. It's this, it's that, it has quote rules and so on. And contemporary art, I don't know, as soon as you die, you're not a contemporary <laughs> artist anymore, I guess, or some rule like that. But the point is through conversations with Gary mm -hmm. and yourself, mm -hmm. I'm starting to understand now that instead of looking at I'm looking in, mm -hmm. and the painting's looking, or the <clears throat> representation is looking back at me, and there's this conversation just starts. Correct. I wonder what in the heck's going on here. I think they're this. Oh, look this. I just looked at Gail Paul's work a little closer when I came here uh, this evening, the one up on the uh, wall over there to my right, uh, and I'm thinking, was that a stencil? And then she reproduced it, or did she this? And then she actually, how clever, she framed it herself, the way she's presenting it. Absolutely. If you put yes. a frame on it, it would almost be strangulation or horrible. So I'm going through all of these things, and I love that, rather than saying, well, it sure looks like a dog. Yeah, that looks like my friend's dog. They'd, yeah. And not, not to discount Absolutely. artists who yes. work in that genre, because I don't work in any of them. But I like what it does to me. I'm getting stimulated. And in some pieces, I'm kind of like, what were they thinking? They're asking how much? So, but I like the fact that I can engage with a piece of art and not judge it on, does it really look like this part of the Blue Mountain, or the Blue Ridge Mountains? Does it really look like a flower? Oh, I don't know, it kind of, but just take my imagination, wake up my gray, gray, gray matter. So I didn't want to digress, but I no, did not no, want to move digression. away from um, this the, is a, um, experience how do you here. say, a, a curvy road. Okay. We can go and can come back and Put on diverse your yes. uh, yes. and yes. detour. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but you asked about my thoughts about the art scene here. And I think you mentioned something that it's extremely important or essential for Gary and I, art should create conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's our goal, to create conversation because with conversation, we all enrich um, by, the, you know, different perspectives, different perceptions. Um, and as we mentioned at the beginning, you being a, a communicator, uh, by nature, by by being mm -hmm. born, um, what do you think is your role? Because we think that you have like a synergetic um, mm -hmm. uh, role in this community. Um, you know, I I I love living in Asheville, and, and it was a very serendipity how I came to live here, and it was unlike most people. It wasn't really planned or deliberated mm -hmm. for any. I, I've spent more time deciding to buy 85% lean or 80% lean pound of hamburger in deliberation than I did moving to Asheville. So go figure. But um, so Asheville really found me. I did not find it. it I've discovered mm. it every day. I discover something else about it. 
and I like who I am here. And many people in my age group, retires, retirees, we tend to, we're, we're reinventing ourselves. And at last, we have nothing to lose. I can tell you to go, because you're not my boss anymore. I'm retired or promotion. I don't have to worry about that. I can be or I can have my voice and be strong. But here in Asheville, I think I can be heard and I can find people to uh, engage with. So uh, when you say um, the, uh, the art scene here and what it means to me or having conversation, this gallery promotes conversation because if nothing else, two people are looking at each other and saying, I wonder what that's all about. Well, wait a minute. I wonder why they chose blue instead of red or black or this so you can go into all these conversations as opposed to it just occurred to me with representational art we're always thinking does it really look like that mm. or he really mm -hmm. did a good do a good job mm -hmm. that's a gorgeous apple one of the best I've so it doesn't take me anywhere except on the object this brings me back to me a conversation with you what I love about it uh, this kind of art and environment here too I want to talk about things, but we're too sensitive to go up to somebody. I'm pretty gutsy, but I'm not going to go up to somebody and say, Francisco, I'm having a really bad day today. I don't feel very human today. I feel alienated. I'm concerned about being old and this, and I, I, I don't know how to do it. We don't talk like that to each other. We don't do that. Maybe to a spiritual counselor, you might make that phone call or make that approach. But stuff like this allows those conversations that are visceral deep down human to somewhere mm. percolate up to the top eventually with That's once we got point. once we got yeah. past i think he should have done red instead of blue then maybe we can get into the other things that are really on my heart or vice versa so i love that and i have a, a background as a sales uh, sales trainer in, in the real estate industry and often to teach people or make people aware how to do things, we had to take them out of their everyday zone and like throw it on the table in something they didn't know anything about. Because once we know something about, if I know what an apple looks like, mm -hmm. then I'm expecting it to, and he'll say, no, it's a Macintosh. No, that's Granny Smith. And it takes away from the expression and the moment of it. You know, in, in one, uh, you mentioned something that is so valuable because in the art world, in, in a gallery, we are not, um, uh, how do you say, intellectuals of art. We are collectors, we love art, we love artists, um, and every day you are navigating on chatter waters. Mm -hmm. um, even sometimes the perception that a uh, a person that comes to the gallery so or a question that is so of the sharp that you look at yourself like uh, uh, let me think how I will respond this question so mm -hmm. um, the one that learned the most is us because we ex we are exposed to so many people that is that's you know fantastic I don't know exactly um, when you began working with the radio station mm -hmm. and your program Dreamers and Doers, which I think is an amazing platform to showcase people that um, had an idea and materialized in, in, in times like now uh, that are so challenging or even, you know, every day trying to recreate and, um, how do you say, transform themselves mm -hmm. and adapt. and. Um, I mean, what is what has been your learning with all the interviews that you have done, and um, what what is the, the the value that you have added to the equation? I think, first of all, thanks to Asheville FM, and I'll just say one hundred three point three FM. If you're local, or if you want to, great music, by the way. Great music. Our music. There's nobody better than us in terms of <laughs> every genre, curated DJ shows, outstanding www.ashevillefm.org so it's community nonprofit. I think what I've learned with dreamers and doers because I try to focus in on somebody either from the entrepreneurial nonprofit or artist community and often that's one person who wears those three or has those three roles 
We always strive to have a, a minimum of two guests during the hour. And we just, we used to try to be more conscious in selecting, well, if we could have a gallery owner, maybe an artist, some obvious parent. And a lot of times right. we don't do that anymore. It could be somebody who um, um, is an agricultural farmer and uh, they're farming hemp is a big crop in our area. A hemp farmer with gallery owner and you'd say, you know what, I guarantee you, I would bet the farm that when that hour is up, these two, three, four individuals have found a commonality. Oh, yeah. There's a commonality. It could be something as simple, wow, all three of us were born in December. Isn't that interesting? Or we all like kale. Oh, no, my Lord. But uh, uh, we, we find some things at a root level that we all agree, and I had two very disparate guests one time and I thought oh, this is gonna be this is a train wreck uh -huh. with these these two different people coming together and first of all they both were raised as what they call military brats mm -hmm. military backgrounds uh, they both um, they both had traveled extensively in the Far East I don't know all of a sudden these two disparate this is one was a alcoholic and recover and the other was a very successful person who worked on space projects science projects in Washington DC and I'm thinking oh what are we gonna and they my guess almost inherently 90% of the time towards about it usually happens somewhere between quarter two and ten to the hour to end they start interviewing each other they I'm out of the picture they say well you know when you said uh, that uh, um, uh, society is uh, just a make-believe concept I would disagree with you and so they just go on like I'm not even there sometimes <laughs> I'll say excuse me but I have to give the station ID and tell everybody thank you for listening so that's what I've learned we're all connected mm -hmm. if you just look for it and I like to think of connecting the dots and there on our common ground we can start and it reduces being confrontational combative Absolutely. and today we're so divided we're so divided we, mm -hmm. we, we, we are identity politics probably to the point of do we recognize being part of the human party anymore that's great you know before we began this conversation we were having delicious um, appetizers that Gary prepared and having a drink um, not to be hungry during this conversation <laughs> And Carol mentioned something fascinating that I, uh, in this moment that everyone is doing Zoom and, you know, teleconferencing and the, you know, about the dimensionalities, I, she brought, and, and I want you to talk a, a little bit about that because it was brilliant. <laughs> I think it was that the Zoom and those teleconferences are really 2D converse, two dimension conversations. Mm -hmm. Whereas right now we're 3D. You can see that I gained a little bit of weight. I can see that this or that, or, uh, and then there's the tactile and I can see facial expressions and, and I'm seeing in a wholeness rather than, to some extent on Zoom, I know <laughs> I was on one earlier today and I literally got out of my sleepwear, put on makeup, did my hair as if I were going out because I realized, oh my gosh, a Zoom call in 10 minutes. I got to, I can't sit, I can't look like this. And I had to uh, get ready for it. But afterwards, there was like a letdown. It was sort of like all dressed up and nowhere to go because mm. there was no tactile. There was no being in the Not presence of, goodbye, like, like when you get dressed up to really go absolutely. out to something, you know? Absolutely. And I think, I, I would hate to see the whole world reduced to that. Correct. It because the be. isolation of it Can't too, be. the isolations of it too. The um, power of a hog, of yeah. a kiss. We're, um, built to, we're built to be, I to think. To sense energy. And, and to feel energy. 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 Yeah. Correct. Yeah, energy. And one, one thing that... Connective seemed, energy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do want to mention a couple things about the art scene here in mm -hmm. Asheville, though, because if we're people listening from other parts, 
Do you mind? No, 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 no. no. Well, first and of all, we have four. I think we have. About... I think we have over thirty galleries here in just our downtown mm -hmm. area art galleries, and we really do have everything. If you start at the South Biltmore Avenue, we have folk art. We have the Hang Gallery, we have the Blue Spiral, uh, Blue Spiral Gallery, we have Contemporano. You we have, have a nice Bender, range. Bender, Bender, Momentum, which is, which is also great. We have a wide range of, of artists and everything from very traditional folk art, experimental art, 3D, 2D, um, uh, international, local artists. It's, it's, it's pretty remarkable when you think that the population of Asheville is roughly 86,000. Our county, Buncombe County, is a little over 200,000, which is not very big, obviously, at compared all. to when you look at your big markets. But I think for somebody who's seriously interested in art, whether you are a collector or maybe you're purchasing for uh, commercial values mm -hmm. of office buildings or you're an interior designer and you purchase for your client. Uh, I think Asheville's got a lot to offer. Yes. And I know for a fact, because I was in Miami and New York earlier this year, is it all right to say this? I think you can buy better here, price points. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to make statements uh, because I'm not in the business, but very true. It's worth the cost of spending a couple nights here and maybe the cost of a plane fare for some of the same uh, artists and quality of artists. And I'm not talking about if you're buying a Matisse or something. That we're not talking about that art market per se. But we are collectors, and we have even us as collectors. And, and I think that we mentioned um, when you were here in another occasion, we had a uh, someone from New York jogging, mm -hmm. and she saw pieces from a German artist from Regina Schumann. And she almost fell and came to the gallery and she could not believe that she bought a piece of art from this very renowned German uh, artist in Asheville at an Asheville price, not a big mm -hmm. city Manhattan price. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I probably derailed you. But no, no, I think, and I think so scale-wise, uh, the art scene here uh, I can tell you, I used to live in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and when I have friends visiting me, and we'll go out to some of the really uh, international or well-known restaurants, like Curate would be an example, Table, um, uh, Limones, Zambra, Limones. Mm -hmm. uh, my Florida friends, we are wine and dine. We're getting appetizers, bottles of wine, and I'm saying, wait, wait, you do, please don't, that's a lot of money to spend. Oh, are you kidding? We've only got an appetizer back home for the... <laughs> So, and we're having that same quality. And I think too, in terms of the theater here, when I first arrived about 13 years ago, it was meh, the theater scene. Now, and it's true, if you go to Asheville, uh, I'm, I'll qualify it and say our theater and all of that, everything is pretty much closed down now. We're during this mm -hmm. lockdown period or quarantine mm -hmm. period. But our Asheville Community Theater for musicals. People go to some of those theater productions and I've sat with them many times in the audience chatting with people. They think they're at a Broadway production. No, this is local community theater who for an audition, 80 to 90 people will show up for parts. Probably two thirds of those people will have had formal training, whether it's a degree Wonderful. in theater, and or careers in New York, Chicago, other big theater, or even the London stage mm -hmm. will be here, and for various reasons they're here. Some of the true, true, real actors, I've had friends who've moved from Atlanta, which is a much bigger market, come to be in Asheville local theater because all they want to do is either be in a play, be at a rehearsal for a play, or be at an audition for a play, or doing the tech or costuming for a play. And here in Asheville, their credentials, they, they can do that. The theater scene here is quite remarkable. We're even having New York playwrights sometimes come down here to do either read-throughs or first run of their play to workshop and, and deal with it at that beginning level. So the theater scene here, the quality of the actors will blow your mind away. Ticket prices Absolutely. are amazing. 
uh, in the music scene, almost without exception, except for big venues like um, the Orange Peel or perhaps, mm -hmm. perhaps Isis, who will have cover bands or regional well-known bands. I saw, um, oh, that Irish group is escaping me now, but, um, oh, what is the name? The Something Brothers. Anyway, uh, I mean, a lot of times you'll see groups just before they're super famous there, but in most of our clubs, you have musicians who are doing original music. And I never thought, like jazz is a good example. Yes. They don't do, you don't say, hey, give me a Duke Ellington A train. No, these are original musicians doing their own works and pieces. I would say most of them are master class level. Uh, they, many of them have degrees or advanced degrees awesome. in music, not just in addition to, oh, they got a good ear for it. The jazz scene here is phenomenal. We have New York missions, musicians who come here because they don't want that bigger scene anymore. So we have the emerging artists who he, she, art, music, uh, theater, can food. Prob food, can probably start out and make experiments, do a lot of things, get some credentials going. The emerging artist, great market for it, or the person who is the uh, retooling artist. In other words, that would, retooling guy would be, he's had his career in New York or internationally. Life takes a different pace. He can, st we have an airport here, he can still fly. We have touring bands who live here who tour with major companies. I have two friends who tour with Michael Bouglier. Okay. So when they're home, they're here, they're teaching or they're playing at uh, a local, a local, uh, a local in place, a local like, venue. like a little jumbos one night. So this is what I love about Asheville. They expect the best, they get the best, and yet you're in a small enough town. And like my friend said recently, Frank Zipperer, he's a, a, a photographer from primarily musicians. And he used to live in Washington, D.C., New York City, big markets. I said, why, oh, don't you miss that? And he said, no. He said, I didn't know those guys I was taking pictures of. Here, they're my neighbors. They're my friends. I had dinner with the other guy the other night. It's this one over here, his wife just had a baby the other day. He said, I know these people. It's, this is my home. Carol, I'm sorry, we, no, 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 I, I mean, she's an ambassador, <laughs> a communicator, I told you. Um, I think this will go like for three hours. Yeah. Um, or we have to do a second run. You mentioned briefly, but I think it's very important. Um, how has been Asheville, or how is Asheville as a retirement community? Mm. Uh, I mean, what has been your experience? I, I, there's a, this is, I know we're considered for sure like in the top 10 of retired communities. Uh, retirement communities to live in. I'm not talking about living in a, a you know, in a, a retirement, a retirement facility. community per mm -hmm. se. Um, first of all, we have it's called Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. It's adjunct to the UNC Asheville campus. There's about 23 of these senior universities all over the country. They offer full all year long, uh, 10, 12 weeks. Uh, and, and the enrollment there is over 2,000. It's almost more enrollment than what's in UNC Asheville. Wow. So these are older right. people still wanting to learn and study. The joke is seniors come here to reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're the seniors, unlike where I used to live, who start discussing, well, how many milligrams of cortisol are you on? Oh, really? We're... Look on a Saturday afternoon, you wonder where the old hippies are? Well, they're still demonstrating and they're on packed place there. And whether it's end the war or end this or start that, there they are. A lot of social activists here is following. We, Asheville leads the nation in the highest number of nonprofit agencies that usually thrive because they have volunteers, man of food banks, everything from social justice, racial equities, to human needs, aging councils. We have well over 220 nonprofits, some of them very big, some of them small, and volunteer opportunities. So the reinvention of the senior people is to be of service because you're not working anymore. What was your passion? The other reinvention often is in the arts and the artistic expression. 
go to River Arts District one day and look who's taking the art classes. They look just like me. I dye my hair. It really is gray, but they they're there and, and they're, re they're reinventing themselves in many many ways. And what they find, what they love about it, if they're coming from a major metropolitan area, area fine dining, more affordable, beautiful places to live. Housing is not inexpensive. It's pricey. It can be compared to. And they also have tons of things to do. I'm not a hiker, but my friends who are my age who tell me well, there's over, you can go and there's over 200 use. miles of hiking yes. yeah. within 20 minutes of Asheville. Yes. Oh, even to drive it would exhaust me, but there's, there's something here. Yes. That's and you can live a few minutes from Asheville and be in very inexpensive oh. places where you can purchase um in fact i was talking today to enrica and she was telling me all the places around Asheville and the price is incredible um definitely this this is the beginning of many more conversations that we will share with the contemporaneo family um but definitely you have a big role we can use instagram we can use facebook we can use gel, we can use TripAdvisor, but there is nothing like people like Carol that connect, That's introduce, right. and create synergies that generate benefits for a lot of people. What you were saying, the causality, and she knows a director, I know an actor, mm -hmm. you know an artist, I know a collector, and the beauty is that somehow, some way, we are all growing in this beautiful community and um, this time has given us the opportunity to uh, embark in dialogues and, and conversations like this and we will have uh, Carol very soon again. It's always a pleasure and now we will enjoy a drink together as a family Thank and you. probably eat more. Thank you so much, Carol. Oh, my Carol. pleasure. I love, a pleasure. I love talking about Asheville, so uh, just push the fast forward if you get started. No, 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 no. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a, a fantastic pleasure. afternoon, a okay? Pleasure. Salud. Yeah, I had already Cheers. connected. No, you connected.